my gosh, this is loud. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Oh, I'm not used to my voice being this loud because I'm usually really quiet. So, hey, uh, welcome everyone to the wonderful world of character design. Um, what I'm trying to do is here, uh, let's learn together. Uh, for those who don't know me, um, my name is Leonie Yu, and I love to focus on character design. And currently working as an artist at Mighty Games. So, uh, what I do is help out with the R4 game updates, um, concepting and marketing art, and the designs shown here are by Scott Bartlett, also known as Chrono Break. Oh no, wait a moment. Technical difficulties. Oh no, no, my slides. I had everything prepared, and now it's failing me. Why? Any mighty people in the room? No. Yay! So some of you here. <laughs> uh oh. Um, so um, outside of mighty, I uh, did the Polaroid comics for um, um, with Love Shack together, and I now have technical difficulties on my own thing. What do you mean I can't see my thing? Oh no. Sorry about this. Um, and also did um, character designs for Made With Love. I did, and also on the internet, I do found art and personal comics called Super Listen Mode and also Burp Doodles. Um, I'm gonna go quite fast. I'm gonna quickly go through it. Um, the issue right now I'm having is, I'm just gonna quickly go out of my app because my slides um, with the speaker notes I have are not appearing anymore and it's constantly loading. And I'm now panicking, oh no. Okay, so um, I prefer one-to-one uh, -one, um, conversations. This is now a train wreck. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> this is the end. I don't know what to do now. Um, is this my talk? <laughs> is this how my life is gonna be? Oh, finally it comes up. Oh, thank you. Okay, so. I'm going to quickly go to where I'm up to. I um, apologize for all this. Um, okay, so I prefer one-to-one -one conversations. I'm happy to interact after this talk. I might do a proper blog post on this talk in, and post up the slides um, in the next few weeks. So do not worry about copying things from the slides. I'm just going to talk. Just listen to me. There's going to be a lot of content. <laughs> um, and there'll be a recording maybe at the end of the year. I don't know how fast GCAP um, recordings are. So what I'm going to do, takeaways. What is Carol's line? Um, now, note that I did an NZGDC um, part one. It's more in, of an introductory talk. Uh, but for today, I'm going to go through really briefly what Carol's line is, and then deep, what deep, effective, um, believable design is, and then go deep into the Carol design process, and then also the challenge at the end. Uh, Hopefully, some of you may actually participate. Now, what is character design? So, everybody wants to be a character designer, even though very few actually do it. It's really cool to design the cool styles of a project, especially in a character-driven game, to show off the game everywhere in marketing and promotional art. Um, but as we know, character design is not this. Nope, this is not character design. These are just my illustrations of designs by Scott Bartlett, and this is not character design itself. This is not it. Okay, I'm uh, quickly gonna go through. Oh gosh, don't don't go through. Oh, sorry. So, um, what is character design? Uh, is the style plus story and imagine, imagination to visually communicate a functional and effective character design. The project uh, is top priority and your audience. It is a team effort. It's not a solo thing. And my slides is failing me again. I apologize for this. Why you are doing this to me? You were working for. Well, okay, I'm just gonna keep plowing through. Um, so ignore the top right corner there, that is an illustration, but everything else is essentially the character design process. This is what I did for uh, the dinosaur update for Disney Crossy Road. This is what character design is. Um, you're problem solving and you're trying to work out what your designs look like. Please come up, please. Oh no. It's doing it again. Anywho, this is what I think um, what um, learning to be an artist is to me. Um, um, it, um, I think personally I'm at the loo loop here where you're constantly trying to research, learn, practice, and then you have to expand to other areas because you can't really only just do character design as a role. Oh my gosh, my. <sighs> I apologize for this. I am trying to, but now, my iPad's locked me out. Thank you, iPad. I don't know why you do this to me. Um, I'm just trying to store for time. 
right now. Great, I think I put the wrong password. Please be patient with me. If I go over time, feel free to leave. I don't mind. This is my fault. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm saying if I go over time, you can leave. I don't want to keep you here. I, I'm not trying to take your precious time away from you. Okay, let's do this, Leonie. You can do this. Okay. Oh, um, oh great. Why you have this loading thing? So it's just constantly loading. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, but um, up here, what well, I have, what, what did I do? Yeah, um, yeah for me, I, I want to, I haven't finished on this slide actually. Um, what I'm trying to say on this slide is that here you're developing your voice and, uh, oh great, this is a train wreck. Why? I've practiced since so long. Okay, so I'm just going to keep going. So um, all, the, all the things over here um, that represent what makes you special in terms of your artistic voice. Um, I think that sure you you would want to like study what other people are doing and um, learn about how they do things, but um, in the end you have to like who you are cannot be taken away with you. And I think um, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm just gonna keep coming through. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to the next area. I apologize for that terrible introduction. Um, but I'm gonna move on to what is deep, effective, believable design. And for me, this is Lucas. He, he's from a game called Mother 3. And uh, it's a game with really, really good writing and um, dark themes. And I relate to Lucas because he's an emotional kid who's trying to work out with, um, who, who who he and his family, he's trying to deal with the loss of a family member. And, uh, and for me, it kind of helped me grieve for my loss of my mother um, at the time when I was playing the game. And um, I grew along with him as I played the game. I felt connected with him. Um, and I was crying just like he was as I played the game. The game allowed me to be emotional, grieve for my own personal loss, grow alongside with him too. And it's one of my most favorite and special games because of it. The iPad works now. Thank you. <laughs> um, yay! Uh, wow, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so when I ask for more perspectives, we relate to game characters because we share feelings, internal struggles, personality traits, how they connect and their relationship with others, their attitude with life, and how they deal with problems. Plus, generally, game characters usually have exaggerated, extreme, or memorable personalities, and it's really hard to relate to a character 100%. Uh, oh gosh, I'm going ahead too fast. So for me, I like doing character design because just with the players of the game, I'm able to live through them and that's awesome. Plus you get to come to life through their own story and adventure and just like an actor, you pretend to be someone else cool and compelling for a while. Um, from an audience's player's point of view, we generally like characters because they're believable as people or personality with attitude and backstory and their motives and feelings. Um, they have a realistic core with layers to them or they're morally grey and the way they relate and interact with others and how they grow and develop during the game. Um, now, with design characters, know who and why your character is the way they are, their heart and essence, what I'm going to call from the rest of the talk, and what they need to be, so their role and function for the game. Your design and art style decisions need to support these two parts, and all three combined, they make this Venn diagram. Uh, <laughs> hello! Um, this is why I'm saying I'm going to upload these slides, no worry. So, um, as I said, there's the character essence, also known the heart, and then the function, so what the character needs to be as part of the game, and how, and lastly, the Asta, what visuals and art design language supports the other two. I will and uh, I'll move on to the next thing. I'll actually go through each um, part here, each three parts, each of the three few parts. So the first part um, is the heart and essence of the character. The writer is key here, or your writing skills. So essentially, you need to ask questions like, who is this character? So the personality, fears, desires, motives, and psychology, their attitude, strengths, limitations, and fears, how they act versus what they say, what are their routine, uh, what is their routine, hobbies, moral compass, how they solve problems, how they face their fears, what they do when they're threatened, what is their typical body language, Not and note, not every character has to be equally fleshed out and deep. This really depends on what the project needs. 
Please do be mindful of stereotypes. Do avoid token minority characters just for the sake of being diverse, objectifying their differences and ticking a marketing box just to fill it in because you don't really care about them as characters and do know that everyone has accumulated experiences, expectations and cultural backgrounds. So do be mindful of confusion and misrepresentation. Do you break out of predictable, st predictable stereotypes with an attitude, um, make them have a life on their own beyond their game function and respect them as characters. Give them character growth, flesh out the character as people and even as morally great characters. Get consultants, writers, testers, designers, developers from diverse backgrounds and avoid being player centric so that the non-playable characters or NPCs, um, it revol their world revolves around them and not the players. Now, to add, hosts certainly do have character relationships. How um, it affects how it's designed, how they act, move, relate, interact, or contrast to others. Um, do they have best friends? Do they have family relationships, friendships? How they treat strangers? Do you best design them as a cast of characters so they contrast, contrast, and are designed well with consistency. Even make a relationship map here, like I'm showing you, it's all the characters, so that everyone on the development team are on the same page. Uh, also add heart in your design through themes, emotional moments, symbolism, tone and mood through the game and how do you, does your character emotionally connect? Or maybe they're just a silly background entertaining atmospheric character. What is their humanity? Uh, what's relatable or unique about them? And if you're going for emotionally compelling characters, they can't just be there just to look cool or mechanically functional. Now with Heart, we need to know who is this character as part of the story? What is their role and archetype? There's a player power and social dynamics between characters and whether they have shared oppose or opposing goals or maybe they just don't care. Now here I'm just depicting the you know, two usual um, stereotypical main archetypes, you know, the hero, the main playable character versus the arch enemy, the villain, the antagonist. And I'm not gonna go through that. Now, part two of the, um, <laughs> yes, tingle. Um, part two of the Venn diagram. As designers, we need to know the function and purpose of the character. How do they help or move along the game? How do they add it to its story, law, entertainment value? Why is this character necessary for the game and story? Also, how will be them, how will they be marketed to your target audience? Are they niche? Is it global? How will, how will this character add appeal and interest to those audiences? How will it be part, part of the branding? Um, so you need to keep design, marketing, and merchandise in mind. Um, how do you want people to feel towards your character? Essentially, what emotions do you want to evoke in your players? Especially if it's a character-driven game beyond just gameplay. Uh, most importantly, how will it enable and support gameplay? Ooh, what am I going? Okay, now players experience the game through you know, main playable characters essentially, and they can be avatar characters, so they're blank slate, bland characters for players to project themselves onto and create their own stories and meaning. Or they're a predefined character to role play as, as through their own story. Or as a puppet for fun and challenging gameplay mechanics. Or it can be a playable character where in a given multiplayer game, so things like party games or sports games or strategy games. Or for a strategy game, or RPG team focused gameplay. Plus, the character needs to look appealing and feel fun, interesting, entertaining, awesome, or compelling to play. Is it intuitive to, you to like to problem solve as this character? Is it intuitive to attack or interact with role play as this character? Do they move, speak, relate to other NPCs or other players? And how much expressiveness in body language and facial expression is needed? Does the backstory and motivation mesh well with the gameplay? Now, NPCs, how do other non-playable characters add to this game and world? How do they add flavor to the game in terms of story and or entertainment value? Are they just a prop or there's something more? Why does this NPC exist? Why are they defining moments? What power dynamics? Are they a leader, follower, bystander, ally, en enemy, neutral party? Do they support, betray, or are indifferent to the main character's goals? And there's many more questions. I'm going to skip a whole bunch of slides that are on uh, non-playable characters. Um, so, as a designer, you need to know technical lim limitations. Is it feasible to implement this character? How much complexity can be afforded and needed? How much acting, expression, uh, animation to make it unique and or believable? How important is this for the player to experience this? Is it easy or possible to even animate this art style? And in terms of like, construction of the character, like these hands over here I've shown here, in terms of 2D or slash 3D meshes, um, is it going to just be one thing or uh, many parts? So do we actually need fingers in this game or do we need stubby arms? How realistic and stylish? are you going for and why why do we need the character to do what do we need the character to do in the game for, so also for armor does it need to be separate to the um, actual character mesh uh, or they need to be um, or they can just be fused to the hand for so like a sword it's just fused to the hand it's up to you you need to figure out how to break it down to make it work and then there is the movement of the jaw the inside of the mouth the neck and then the arms because that's going to move a lot probably in terms of your game so you need to make sure your design works and looks good even though it's distorted and being animated 
Now, the last part of the Venn diagram is the art style of the character, which is reined in by technical and project limitations. Is our design practical or is it just pretty, rather than just for story production or budget? Now, note these marketing illustrations are not suitable for a mobile game. They are too big. Uh, and moving on, how does this art style, or more questions about art style, is that how does uh, art style fit with the world and environment? How does it effectively sell and express your game? Does it suit the intended mood and atmosphere? What are your artistic influences and why? What makes them work and not work for your project? Does it draw your target audience in effectively? How unique is it compared to other projects and what did, how did they make it work and what didn't work for them? When developing art style, you can go from um, Oh, you need to consider the level of realism and what the target audience finds appealing. So you can go from a really family-friendly art style, it's easy for kids to draw, it's understandable and recognisable by appearance, and there's symbolism to do with um, how you stylize their clothes, pose, and archetypes. Um, and then there's a special pose and similar traits to your slide to you. And maybe and it's probably more colourful and whimsy, and functionally it makes it silly, entertaining, and fun. Or you could go for a more mature, realistic kind of art style just to depict sexual themes, graphic violence, to ramp up the cool or deeply compelling factor through realistic, darker, or toned down colours. Colors, sorry. The more photorealistic it is, the less visually distinctive, especially the silhouette it is, and many use back character backstory and acting to compensate and add depth to the character instead. Note that uh, given character does not have to be everything, it doesn't have to be super attractive, friendly, and, and full of ability, and have to have like complete, exaggerated, um, um, massive entertainment value, unless you're going for a mascot or you're going for a very perfect and boring character. Again, with developing an art style for your characters, it will be a messy and a lot of iterations. I will show you later on how I struggle with it. You will, will essentially switch between what does it work functionally and also um, does it look good, um, making sure you're keeping in line with art direction. Now, this is the Venn diagram again. Um, you can see how it all comes together, heart, function, and art style. And I stress you do not have to have all three at full capacity because it really depends on your game. Now, with, for, for example, for um, for example, for characters with both heart and function, um, this is an art style that doesn't actually suit the in-game art of Frame 2. Now, note that these are Frame 2 concept for um, Polaroid illustration I did using my personal comics art style. Um, they're just for silly, terrible, silly moments from the game, and I had to figure out if we needed legs, faces, expressions, and what level of detail is needed for, with the Love Shack team to represent the Frame 2 characters as well. Note, I already had well-developed characters that exist, um, th that's for the project and story, that worked well, but this cute art style wouldn't actually suit for the actual game, and this is why it's only a side bonus a shareable collectible thing. Now, example of characters with heart and art style. This console art I did for the Shitty Skies arcade machine boss, it doesn't work for the game. Now, note that Shitty Skies is not really a story driven kind of game, it's just a ridiculous, fun, shoot 'em up kind of game. So, this is a this character suits, it's a ridiculous boss character. Um, because it's due to, now it doesn't work with the actual mobile game because it's too detailed and I'm kind of bashing my art right now. So, um, moving on, this is how the content art works in the actual game itself. So here I've readjusted and simplified the voxel art version together with art team feedback to technically make it work. It doesn't look as extreme as the content art, but I'm happy we captured the gist of it. And technically and functionally, it's a huge feat to actually make it work exactly like the content art. It's not practical or vital to do. And lastly, example of where the characters fit, function, and art style together in the Venn diagram is probably where most characters lie. Um, they're just cool looking characters that work. Um, they're well executed characters for the game, but arguably they're visually boring and aren't memorable and predictable. They're cool looking, exaggerated, stylish, stereotypical, one dimensional, but they are effective. They fulfill their function and are vi visually pleasing. And sometimes we just need an, an exaggerated, bland character, avatar character to project yourself in onto you as the player. Um, so if the game is fun, that's cool because it's the gameplay that keeps um, people playing and it's the visual style that draws people in and the shallow, the sh shallow story is there to add, um, add to the game's special own flavour. Plus, as I said before, you can add, sell a deep, meaningful character through their acting, backstory, interactions rather than just through art style. I really like this quote because it reinforces what I said at the start of the talk because whatever works for your project is what character design should be. It shouldn't be boring, it should be fun, it's challenging, you just, just want to make something that works and it's amazing when it comes to life in your games. Okay, so uh, now we're going to go into the third area where I'm going to actually go through the character design process and I think I need a quick drink.
Oops, I just leave it onto this actual slide. I'm just going to have a drink. Ooh. And now it's loading again. Hello. Okay. I'm just going to quickly go through this. Okay, so in terms of the character design, I'm going to go through brainstorming, so where you're trying to figure out the heart and function of your characters. And then the, and another part, next part is number two, where you're learning and you're collecting inspiration and research and mood boards. And you do a lot of studies and thumbnails and all the fun stuff. Um, and this page is essentially you trying to find, figure out your art style. Um, don't really have to go through all of it, but um, this is how I kind of do it. I go through figure out the gesture, the silhouette, and look at all the design principles. And then I figure out the turnaround just so that I can construct the character in 3D space. And then if needed for the game, you talk about, you think about the facial design and expression, costume and prop design. Oh my gosh. And also um, the tonal color and mood design that suits your game. Um, and then number four is when, once your character design is done, you look into making character design model sheets. You ensure that there's consistency in design throughout production. So there's the front view, three quarter front view, side view, back view, and three quarter back view. And then there's also a character cast lineup sheet. And lastly, there's the extra thing on marketing illustration if your game needs it. It's not really part of the character design process, but it's only when it's needed. Now, I'm going to demonstrate the character design process through these two projects. So the one at the left is um, Made of Love. It's a um, dating sim game where I designed um, all five dateable characters, and that was in 2015. And I took around five weeks to do it. Um, and a, a bit more if I wanted to add the time I spent trying to do the in-game art. And then on the far left, no, far right there is Meow Finders, which is uh, what I did um, for the challenge. Me trying to figure out, uh, wait, wait a minute, I'm trying to find the slide that I'm up to. The problem is right now is that the slides that I are oh, the up to date one it's not showing up but the old version is showing up so I'm going to work from my old slides unfortunately. Okay. And I had the idea of, okay I'm continuing on and I had the idea for Mia Finders at um since March but now I've only recently to start working on it and I actually just spent only a handful of days it's not actually 2 weeks. I spent rest of the time working on this talk. So, <laughs> so with Maybe Love, I want to start with the brainstorming um, process. We had a lot of discussions and there was a lot of briefing with my client Lauren at the time and Snow, the writer, to make sure I'm on the same page with how they want the characters to be. Then I jumped deep into a lot of brainstorming and visualization and asked a lot of questions based on the story, acting, personality, essentially what I talked about in the Venn diagram. Like, who are we marketing to? This is the magic. Who are we designing for? I had one of my art stars at a starting point because they said, I want that art star that you did. I'm like, okay. And um, who, how will this character live their life? I asked them. Um, who are they as characters? And I like to think um, live as your characters because it allows you to discover how to make them believable and interesting. Now for brainstorming with Meow Finders on my own, this is some context for my game idea. Um, I haven't done this before with doing game ideas out there. But um, it starts with all the pair of siblings who find a kitten. Um, they're not really original characters, but I don't have much time at the moment. But And, and I also had other characters ideas I won't share here. But essentially it's a part of party of three, including a new kitten that they found. And it's essentially loosely based on me and my brother and how my brother kind of hypothetically wants a cat. So. Um, so, what you do in this game um, is that you play some mini games at first to take care of the kitten and bond with it, and then it grows into a mega huge cat over time. You don't know why. One day they realize there's a crisis of missing cats around the world. Oh no! And then they discover the cat has a special sensing ability, and that some, for some reason they can suddenly find the missing cats. So they thought, okay, let's find a cat finding agency, and then travel the world to, ha you know, to help people around the world find their cats. So, um, the, this game is kind of like an RPG where you're trying to talk to people, find out about their missing cats, become detectives, figure out where their cats have gone, um, depend, based on the clues to, um, provided by the owner. Now, and when you're, once you're on the right trail, it becomes a rhythm runner game with cool music. Um, you play as the cat, while a pair of humans on your back are the riders with different support abilities. You can switch between them to activate them. 
Now this is me trying to figure out the main lead, aka the cat, and this is really a basic version of the concept I have for the cat. Um, the cat is curious, sleeps a lot, feels alone, trying to find where it comes from, but it just wants to help save Earth cats, right? So, and its function is that it's the main playable character in the rhythm parlor game. It jumps, moves, um, slams, um, and then there are bonding mini games with your humans, and also part of the game where you're searching for uh, quests to do to help find missing cats. Now, I didn't really work too much on the human characters. I didn't have time, um, but they are the support characters, and as a trio, they're the, they're the main characters you play as. And interaction and bonding is key here, so contrast and appeal are needed. Now, here's me working out the heart and function for each, but I won't go into them. I will do so in the challenge. Now, in terms of inspiration, um, essentially people who love rhythm games and cats and RPGs and taking care of and bonding with pets. It's going to be cute, whimsical and fun and silly. And you need to think about these things because it helps guide your character design decisions. So this is a bunch of things that inspired me for this idea. Um, in terms of us, I'm trying to find a balance between minimalistic cuteness and expressive acting. Um, I want to um, appeal to people who love cute, fun, head-bopping games. I'm looking for things that are bright and colourful, maybe cell shaded. I don't know if I'm going to do line art, probably so, I don't know. And in terms of animation, it's going to be like simple in terms of the mini game parts and RPG parts of the game, but probably in the rhythm parts of the game, I want it to be animated and fully alive. Okay, for back to Maybe Love, the research side of a character design process. I love this part because um, you're looking for inspiration for art styles and color palette and swatches and patterns and costume design and things and moods and shapes and photo references and look out for what's already out there in terms of movie and game personalities. See why they work or not work. For me, I tend to swim in a lot of research. I do a lot of mood boards. I collect references. That's one of my favorite things because I get to learn. It helps me get into it. Um, at the moment, it's probably art style is not 100% defined now, but then I'll happily get it developed along the way. And for Made of Love, I kind of took a week to discover the world of maid cafes. <laughs> um, I looked at a lot of videos and photos and I can say that maid cafes aren't my thing, but they're really interesting. <laughs> yes. Um, so with for research for meow finders, there was a problem because I don't know how to draw cats. I know that there's, you know, I know the symbols, what a cat looks like, kind of, you know, eyes, nose, whiskers, and 20 years, but I don't know how to draw real cats, so I'm like, hey, people, do you, can you send me your cat photos? And, <laughs> and I also looked at the internet, and I'm currently still drawing a lot of studies of cats. I'm going to show you some now. So I'm kind of here trying to learn I'm from um, an animal anatomy books. I'm breaking out silhouette, looking at muscles and anatomy, skeletal structure, mechanics of limbs, the main line of weight, contours of the body. Uh, more, you know, central gravity, talking about mechanics of limbs, how it works, how it actually works in 3D space, look at proportions and lines and contours, more studies, and more <laughs> studies, yep, and more studies, yep. And this is, uh, moving on to, this is Jenny's cat. I drew her cat. Uh, here I am, <laughs> yeah, I'm playing with shapes, proportions, and how to show personality. Note that this is not photorealistic because I'm not trying to be photorealistic. I'm trying to figure out my art style right now, and I'm, I'm a bit more comfortable with cats now. Um, I'm, I'm exploring, for example, I'm, I'm kind of exploring how much fur detail to put, whether I should just not even show fur at all, or I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out. Here, it's more cats, and I'm currently leaning towards the two art styles at the bottom left, and I want to ask your opinion. Hands up if you like the bottom left cat more compared to the middle one. Okay, hands up if you like the bottom middle cat. Oh, okay, there's more of you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, I like both. But, <laughs> but I know that the middle one, the art style is pretty common. I know, you know even Neku Atsume actually has an art style and I'm like, I don't want to copy it, um, but I like it too. So I'm thinking maybe I'll just use this art style for, you know, um, the missing cats instead and then um, use the bottom right cat there as the main character's um, cat, um, art style design. So this is Ben's cat. I think he's in the audience. Ah. <laughs> yes. Um, here I'm pushing these art styles with different poses and proportions. I'm, I'm exploring personalities. Um, I realized that, hey, I actually need a back for people to ride on. So I can't actually merge the head with the body. I can't do that because if I merge it together, where are the people going to ride? It's like, uh oh So I'm here trying to figure it out. Um, note that these are still studies. 
this is not the final design. I'm still working it out because this is a fun bit. Okay, now first back to you, maybe with love. Oh no, this is the old slides. Okay, okay, I'm back to you. Um, moving on to more concept design principles, gesture. I call it the heart as well because this is where your character actually expresses themselves, how they move, how they, um, you know, behave in um, essentially their body language. Um, and I did this breakdown, this is a recent breakdown, and it's not really what I did at the time because I wanted to show how gesture is so important. It shows body language, energy, mood, emotion, feeling, attitude, personality of the character. Um, here I've shown lines of action in red. Um, also, I'm talking about how the axes versus the line of action is really important. So especially the eye line, the shoulder line, and the hips, um, how it um, um, how it relates to the line of action. You need to also know how they tilt. Uh, and also to use the lines of rhythm, lead your eye through, through the body um, and provide variety. That is, those are the lines in purple. Um, also, do act out, the, pose yourself in you know, video or photo form um, so that you actually feel how the character poses, stands and acts because this shows the essence of the character. Um, and then lastly, in blue, the weight line or okay, the main line of gravity, it keeps the character grounded in 3D space so that your character doesn't look like it's going to topple over. Anywho, this is for Meow Finders. Um, at the top here, I'm trying to use, like, at the top, there's all these different rhythm lines I got up there because I'm trying to figure out, okay, what kind of design language I'm going to go for? And I'm going to, like, I put it all up there just to figure out, okay, I'm going to play with um, what I want in my design. So here's just more gesture studies from cat photos and it's essentially art style exploration. Now, this is me free run expression weight body language with this art style. I'm not really focused on the colors here. The colors aren't really singing to me. I don't really like the purple. Um, I'm not quite there yet. I think I need to go back to studies actually, but this is just me showing that it's a whole problem solving process. You don't know whether you're going to get there or not until you keep trying at it. Anywho, with, when you start designing, you need to know what your character wants to end up looking like and how they will animate. How will the design be pushed to move in your actual game? So for animation with Mabel Love, this is the final game assets and they had limited um, facial animation expression frames. Um, so um, just to depict how limited it is, it's, it's a visual novel. You don't really need much animation. Um, uh, so this shows how limited my animation skills are. But um, what I'm trying to say is, in general, animation is what brings your characters to life. You need to know how your designs will come to life and design for that. Now for Meow Finders, this is me showing some jumping doodles for the rhythm side of the game. I don't know how it will be animated at this point because this is all hypothetical. Don't, I don't think this will be ever be made. Um, but and this <laughs> this slide is the last one for Meow Finders because I ran out of time and I'm gonna keep working at it for the um, character design challenge that I'm gonna keep doing after this talk. So I'm gonna post more cat doodles, okay? Okay. <laughs> um, now moving on to shape exploration. Know that shapes are used differently by different artists and do ask questions uh, like think about um, shape psychology, so I'll talk about the most three basic ones. So there's the square to show, if you use squares in your design, there's to show how strong, stable, bold, tough, rigid, solid, dependable, rugged your character is. Or if you use a lot of triangles, it, they're sharp, dangerous, fast and aerodynamic and dangerous. Or you use circles, so they're cute and appealing and welcoming and friendly and f nice and friendly and all that. And you can use a lot more combinations um, uh, to make it um, much more, more interesting than just those three basic shapes. But I'm trying to stress is that strong silhouette is everything at a glance, because at a glance you want to show the stance, posture, um, body type, body language, and do play with size and variation, play with the combinations of small, medium, large shapes to see what works. Now with proportions, this is my terrible silhouettes as I struggled with it. Um, do note the limits of 2D slash 3D art production. Think about what can be animated. What, always think about story and how their role affects design. Know where you're going to break the art style and, and when it starts to look terrible and then pull it back again. Um, with scale and proportion, what, how stretchy is the body? What are the passive and active parts of the body? Um, push and pull your shapes and size and keep iterating and playing. Whoops. Now, this is my third attempt at doing turnarounds for Made of Love um, to establish body and costume proportions. I made a lot of studies um, of made cafe uniforms and trying to figure out what my client wanted, and I learned about drawing frills, textures, patterns, and what kind of look I want to um, create for them. Now, note that there is such thing as too much detail um, 
So you need design actually to put in negative quiet spaces to contrast and emphasize the high density detailed areas in your design. So you do have a hierarchy of medium, heavy, and little detailed areas. Um, so for Maybe Love, um, we're kind of working out how much balancing we, of detail we want and note that the stockings, they have a flower pattern. We thought, okay, that's too much. And then there also there's the um, frills in the sleeves and then there's also the detail in the dress hem and then detail at the back. We like, that's too much detail. We need to turn it back. So we, we um, took that away after this iteration. What I like to do is push the design and then pull it back and simplify it if it doesn't work. Now to figure out how each character represented, wait, uh, and for me, I really want to represent how like each character's personality um, through their costume and accessories for. So for Gia here, um, she loves gardening. She trains all the maids at the maid cafe. So I have flowers, roses, pearls, and leaves as her motives. For Reva, she is the cook of the maid cafe. She loves action movies, comedy, boxing. She needs hearing aids and she signs and lip reads. So her motives are smiley, swirls, loops, and feathers. For Chi, the cat had kind of disappeared later on, we killed it, um, I'll talk about it again later. But her motives are cats, paws, bells, spirals, and bows. And for Misty, she loves anime, cuteness, video games, and sweet food. And her motives are pom-pom strips, I mean stripes, not strips, um, bunny ears, and stars. And lastly, Thea. Hers is her fabulous top hat, diamonds, musical pop singer headset gear, and musical notes, and her big swirly wavy hair. Now here I'm kind of broke it down again recently, and just to show how I how my, show demonstrate how they relate to each other without clothes, um, how many heads high relative to each other. Um, talk about how I applied shape psychology and the themes I applied, so that it goes from left to right: stability, strength, love and friendship, passion and sensuality. Um, I, how I use positive and negative space essentially, and how they contrast with each other. I said that. Whoops. Anyway, after many, many terrible looking iterations later, this is version four of the cast lineup. Here I've kind of sorted out the shape and design language and their different body types and proportions. It's kind of recognizable at a split glance. And essentially you need to ask, what is the first thing a person notices about the design? So for Gia from the left um, is her long hair and leaves at the size of her head. Um, for Reva, her short hair and athletic build. Um, for Chi, her pear-shaped body and pigtails. And Misty, her bunny ears and the squish of her hair to the left. Left, and um, Thea, her top hat and voluminous, vol voluminous baby hair. This is my sixth turn around to refine the design once again, and I kind of blocked them in dark gray to test it for the silhouette as again because I want to see if does it work as a whole and not as individual parts. When you squint, can you tell them tell what it is? You want to strive for instant readability. You see how the costume design actually breaks the design as well and showcases their personality. And I also had to uh, work out how much detail to put at certain areas and putting it where it counts. You need to ensure variety, aka the spice of life, to create interest. Otherwise, you get monotony, and you're trying to avoid unintentional repetitive uniform shapes. Contrasting shapes are important. Now, here is another breakdown where I break even more down to the shape design, how, it, how the body relates to the clothing, um, and also the color motifs for each one. I'm trying to unify and establish our design choices at the core and show it at its simplest form. Uh, and you can clearly see how the clothes affect the silhouette here and how it adds visual weight, especially how puffy for um, the dresses for each character and how I kind of um, made it less puffy for some characters because it didn't really suit their personality. And a rough rule on tones, textures, patterns, and detail, there's some people who say, you know, 70, not as much detail, and then 30% well, all the detail goes into the 30% of the design. Some people say 60, 40, or 80, 20. This is your, how you want to define your art style. Um, as long as it's not too boring, predictable, and even divine, evenly divided, um, it's all good. Okay. Whoop. Anywho, I want to move on to construction. Um, this is where I actually do the proper turnarounds to figure out form, construction, and anatomy, the masses. Um, and for me, this is, you probably don't need to do like so many turnarounds as I did, but I do it because each time I do it, I figure out what works and what doesn't work. And here, I think this is where the clothes get finalized. So for dimensional and believable character, do keep checking the form, construction, and volume, weight, anatomy, and keep defining your 2D shape language. Um, uh, for 3D and animation, wait, for 3D animation and modeling purposes, with your turnarounds, you need to be able to show 
to draw all angles because you're essentially designing a 3D puppet that needs to go look good at from all angles. So you need to design how the mouth will open if it needs to, the body parts, how they squash and stretch, the number of fingers, um, how you design the teeth because if your mouth is going to open, you need to show how the teeth look like. Um, you need teamwork with the modeler, technical artist, essentially the whole team to find a solution and make the character work in the game. In terms of hair, clothing, and accessory design, it shows where um, the characters from, where they're from, their setting, their era, their history. Um, also, in terms of artistic, no, you need no, you know, you need to depict gravity and tension in the clothing and hair as the body moves. Um, and, and in general sense, with clothing design, um, it shows how the character takes pride in their appearance. Um, how much are they willing to spend on fashion trends, or maybe they don't care about fashion. Um, um, it kind of depicts their personality and feeling through the way they dress, and maybe it the way they dress changes uh, uh, throughout the game, and it shows how the character develops, how how the character develops throughout the whole game, um, and whether they value um, style over fun like function, whether they just care about fashion and don't really care about um, if it actually works on their bodies, um, and also in terms of detail. Um, do can, do put in distress wear and tear wrinkles and dents at um part, like parts of the like points of interest because it gives a sense of history and character. But the more like texture patterns, color tests, and all that you add, the more clutter and too much um, visual interest is going on. So you need to be measured in your design decisions decisions when you add a lot of detail and texture in your um, costume design. Now, in terms of prop design, you have to consider how well your props suit the character's personality. What is their ability? Do they cook? Do they garden? Do they fish? Do they heal? Do they attack? How do they wear and hold it? Also, it's the way how they use a certain um, prop. Um, it also showcases their personality. For example, here, Sia is a, a flirty, glamorous, aspiring pop singer. So all the things she wears supports her love of music and who she is. From her elaborate hairdo, her show business royal looking hat, um, her headphones and headset mic, and her coffee strong makeup. No, um, this is if your um, actual game needs it, um, you do expression and facial design sheets. So you need to consider the head versus the jaw shapes, the eye and mouth shapes, the inside of the mouth if you need to, how far to push the face before it breaks and it looks like a, like a um, terrible monster. Um, <laughs> know the proportions of the face for consistency, especially so from the top of the head to the eyes, the eyes to the nose, nose to the mouth, mouth to the chin. Think about the ratio and keep it consistent throughout your um, um, turnarounds. Um, and also note the size of the ears, nose, mouth, neck, and shoulders. Um, acting and expression designs. Well, how will they move the face? How do you make sure they look good at all angles while you're there emoting? How far are you going to exaggerate? What are the limits within the game? Um, how you squash and stretch? Um, um, do you draw over the head turnaround again for new expressions? Keep it consistent and essentially use references and use your own mirror and act it out yourself. Look at your own face. Um, moving on. Okay, so here this is um, me and Lauren at the bottom on Skype chatting, th chatting things over because we're like, okay, some colors aren't working for Chi and Misty. We need to figure this out. So this is kind of like the lineup, I think the version 5 um, for our feedback session. Uh, we figured, okay, let's go with black because the yellow colors aren't working for Misty and let's go with mint green for Chi because the other greens aren't th doesn't seem to be working. And this is where we killed her cat hat because it's not working either. And at the bottom um, right over there is me emphasizing do schedule actual even a whole day of rest so that you get fr some fresh eyes um, after working on this project for so long because I, for this project I essentially spent like five weeks full time on it and as you can see I did a lot of turnarounds. Um, now finally this is uh, finally here this is where the design process is done. I cannot change everything anymore. This is it. I can't keep iterating anymore. The design process is done. So generally this is at the point where you can pass this on to um, other artists or yourself um, to continue making 2D and 3D game assets. Um, do show the front view, as I said, side, back, three-quarter front, three-quarter back views. And to go briefly um, over on the color design that we settled on, here, Gia, her colors are brown to um, showcase reliability, loyalty, simplicity, and her love for gardening. Um, Reva's colors here are mainly for uh, yellow, uh, for happiness, warmth, optimism, optimism, strength, hope, positivity, strength, and energy, and loyalty. 
Um, change colors are mostly pastel green to represent um, um, balance, energy, harmony, and life. Misty is mainly black and gray to showcase her moodiness, mystery, seriousness, um, sense of power, formality, and elegance. And lastly, Thea's colors is you know, essentially mostly indigo blues to showcase her power, sincerity, compassion, magic, and um, sense of glamour. Now, this is the final um, post character cast lineup, depicting how they work with each other and ensure that their design with consistency. Note that this is not the usual T pose, because I'm like, this is the character. The character needs to be posed to showcase who they are. They're not, they're not going to be posed in a boring way, whether it's sym symmetrical and mirrored. That's really boring. And note that this is still not marketing illustrations nor in game art. This is, as I said, over the course of nine. Well, five to nine weeks in 2015, this is not over an overnight result. So, because for me, it's very important to me to take sufficient time to explore and iterate towards character designs that suit their personalities, backstories, backstory, motivation, and for in-game purposes. Now, I showed this slide earlier, but this is me, just me showing how the actual in-game, uh, final in-game assets look like. Uh, I did this after the five weeks. Uh, and finally, the last bit, the Care Design Club. Um, this is my blog. This is where you would find it. I indicated it up at the top there. Um, it just is to design a set of characters and show your progress. And it doesn't matter if you're not finished. You can see that from Meow Finest, I'm not finished either. Uh, and I'm going to keep going. And essentially, I'm going to keep accept submissions from everyone. I'm going to encourage anyone to do this. Um, just one person per submission, though. Um, I will post them as they come, but this is not a race. Um, the due date is in the 17th of December, and I'm, what I'm emphasizing is that you're gonna take your time and push your comfort zone, just like um, I just did with my struggles with um, my process. Um, I'll also ask you questions like, introduce yourself, um, talk about your game, your characters, uh, what is your art style, talk about your inspiration, and all that stuff. All the questions are actually on the seller site, so I'm not gonna read all of it. Uh, number two, you need to design a set of three characters, so you need to choose three archetypes. So things like hero or sidekick and um, minion or anything like that, it, the list is already on the site. And what you need to submit in terms of art, you need to submit 10 images. So it goes from mood board to thumbnails to expression and pose sheets and then the final cast lineup. So 10 images because that's the limit of Tumblr for some reason. Anywho, so, so number four, links to your, do give me your links to your website, social media, Tumblr, whatever, so that people can find you and so I can link back to you when I actually submit your um, entry. Uh, and over social media, do tag the, that Twitter handle, um, Car Char, Char Design Club, um, because I may retweet through that, um, through that Twitter. Do post your working process, progress work on um, social media or your sites. And after the due date, I'll figure out how to discuss your de designs. I probably might do a stream, or maybe I'll just do a draw over and try to attempt to draw your design. I don't know, I'll just figure it out. Uh, so this is the Tumblr where you submit your work to, and the due date is right there, the 17th of December. Um, as I said, the slides will be up in a couple of weeks, I hope. Let's see how I go um, after Migwa. Um, uh, and if you want to post your homework, as I said, do hashtag GCAP17 and um, tag that Twitter. Um, if you want to tweet about this talk in general, just um, at me, at Leonie Yu. Oh, no. Now, at, now I'm gonna, as I said, continue with the challenge with Meow Finders as well. I'm not actually expecting people to actually do the challenge because um, no one from the New Zealand one did anything because I knew that everyone was busy. So I'm like, I'll just change it to December for everyone. But, <laughs> but I'm, I'm gonna do it at least and I'm gonna share what I've learned. Um, if you'd like to follow that, that's, that's up to you. But I'm gonna keep learning um, and fail and keep going and trying and draw more cats. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, now I want to give a special thanks to all these people. Um, also my talk mentors, um, Sally, and the people supporting me because I didn't think I would be here at all talking. Uh, special thanks to Modern Games for allowing me to take annual leave to prepare for this talk. Uh, uh, yeah. And thank you so much for coming lastly. Thank you for coming um, for my first GCAT conference talk. Thank you for bearing over this train wreck at the start. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, it, was, it was not what I planned, no. Um, but um, if you have any questions, there's about two minutes left, right? I think, kind of, yes. You got to, you're saying 10, okay. Um, so if you have any questions, um, um, do you ask them now? Or otherwise, feel free to catch me around the week and talk to me and tweet at me or something, whatever you do. But yeah, that is my talk, thank you. <laughs>
Oh. Okay, are there any questions? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that usually something that you do on your own, or is that given to you by the game designers? And kind of how much like creative potential is there in that, given like the ramifications that can have to the rest of the game? In terms of a game project, usually it's the designer and writers and people on the team who tell you what they kind of want, but then it's up to you to push it further. So it's it's kind of like a team effort, actually. So it's, it's, it's like, if for Meow Finders, it's my own project. I can do whatever I like, right? But um, with a project like Maybe Love, it's not up to me. It's up to my client, Lauren. And uh, we had to work out a compromise to make it work for her game. Because it is ultimately, in the end, their game and not yours. So, yep. Yay. Anyone else have questions? No? Yes. Yeah. Well, what kind of uh, framework do you use to relate the characters to the environment? And the space that they're in? What was the last bit? Sorry, could you repeat that again? Uh, what sort of framework or language do you use to relate the characters to the environments and the space that they're living in? To relate to the environments that they live in. Uh, now, this is n out of my um, personal scope because I am not a writer. This is where, you <laughs> where you, either you look into what inspires you, what media and books and all that um, inspires you and then you learn about how to write characters and storytelling and all that on your own or you actually get a writer to help you. So I, I don't have an answer to that question. Yeah. Anyone else? Yes. Um, you, you talked a lot about uh, the characters as either like a single character and you know, a single state. Like yep. visual upgrades. So in terms of costume design, as in how would I do that or what exactly? Um, now, with Maybe Love, I actually did have casual clothes designed for them, but then I can't show it because it's secret. <laughs> so they're not always wearing maid cafe clothes because that's kind of, that's not real life kind of, that's not that you know, realistic. So I actually did design um, a set of clothes for each of them, casual clothes, um, after this whole thing happens. So uh, in terms of how, it's essentially, hey, how do they live their life and what do they wear in the morning, what do they need to do, do they go to the gym? You actually think about, if I were to live in a, in a day in the life of them, um, what would they need to wear and what do they value? And in terms of multiplayer games, it's customizable, isn't it? It's up to the player to decide what they want. So they, they could be wearing a mask, they could be wearing um, short shorts or like bathers or whatever. They don't, it doesn't really need to have design in mind for that because it's up to the player to decide what they want. So, yeah. Hello. Very important. I emphasized throughout the whole talk about making sure your character looks good at all angles. So I think it's really important, um, which is why I emphasize um, in terms of, as an artist, you need to figure out, hey, uh, I need to be able to draw this character at all angles and show the client or the rest of the team how you want it to look. Otherwise, your design will look really off at certain angles and that's not really that great and, or intended. It's, you know what I mean? It's unintentionally not looking that great. So you need to fix that. Um, anyone else? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just out of curiosity, what's the silliest thing you've ever done to research to make sure this character was like spot on? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I actually looked at made cafe videos from a perspective of people going and it was kind of really disturbing. So I'm like, oh no, where am I what what did I go into? But then um it, it's not in like a really terrible way, it's just Interesting and weird, it's like, okay, this is a little bit creepy, but um, that's one of the things, other things I don't remember from the top of my head, but I'm sure there is a lot. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes.
Oh, um, so how would you be motivated to explore more beyond your comfort zone and actually push your design and not draw the same thing, essentially? Right, okay. Uh, this is really down to the artist, really, what they want to improve on. For example, a lot of people don't like drawing hands. Um, a lot of people don't like drawing um, um, all sorts of things. It, it depends on the artist, and I don't really have an answer for that because it's different for every artist. It's essentially what do you want to improve in, and what do you want to do at the end. There's a lot. Of, there's a mix of um, what do you enjoy versus what you want to do, and you need to make sure that they combine into like they, there's you you at the overlap of the two, and that's a hard question. I don't have an answer right now. Sorry, Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, for me, I, I do it because I like learning. As you can see, how much research and studies I do because I love it. I'm like, oh, what is this bone? Oh, oh, another disturbing thing I did. I saw. Yeah. Yes. Oh, more. Oh, more. Okay. Um, is this documentary where they cut up human bodies, and I was watching. <laughs> I was watching how they cut up people. You know, for science, right? Science, and. <laughs> Um, and how each layer, like how you cut things up and then look at the organs and I'm like, hmm, okay. <laughs> it was in black and white as well, so I'm like, okay, this is not as gory, I can take this. If, if it was gory, I'll be like, nope. Um, yeah, that's another disturbing thing I did, to trying to learn anatomy. That was like a German um, documentary, I think. Um, any other questions? Oh, it's the end now? It's the end now, so if you want to leave, you can leave now. I don't want to take your time, but yes, another question. Yep. Okay, so if you can't take breaks, uh, if you can't just you know do something entirely different from art, just to take a you know to take a step back away from it, um, what I recommend doing is you just focus on one thing to study. For example, you want to study for a particular artist, or you want to study uh, uh, like just um, drawing heads, or essentially just go to your comfort zone and just draw the things you like and just doodle and don't care what comes out of it. You're not trying to show anyone this, you just want to doodle things out. Especially for me, I like drawing heads, and I just draw a lot of heads on and fill up a lot of pages and just try to figure out, um, figure out how to like drawing again. I don't know, this is, this is up to you though. How do, what, do you, what, what do you exactly struggle with? Yep. I'm feeling Okay, at this point you need trusted artists, friends to use their their eyes and actually, you know, talk with you with your own designs. That's another thing. Get critique, feedback because I think critique and feedback is the fastest way to improve and get more new ideas outside of your own brain because sometimes you're just too stuck in your own mind. That's what I would do. Anyone else have any more questions? No? Okay, go eat lunch now. <laughs>